Welcome to Nat's Homeschool with Professor Nat. Today, we're gonna to talk about vaccines because we've been hearing a lot more than usual about vaccines lately because of the COVID crisis. So I actually wanted to learn a little bit more about what they are and how they started and then share some of this interesting information that I picked up along the way with you guys. So to start, an immunization of which a vaccine is a form of is a way of artificially activating the immune system to protect against infectious diseases. So basically by exposing an organism to a small dosage of the virus, it tricks the body into developing an immunity to it. That's how vaccines work. So do you want to hear the history? Because it's kind of cool. The world's first vaccination was invented for smallpox. Now, smallpox was a global pandemic for centuries. It affected everyone from the pharaohs in Egypt to the Romans to Chinese emperors. The first recorded method to fight smallpox was actually in China, where immunity was gained by provoking a mild form of the disease in healthy people by blowing powdered smallpox scabs up their noses. Gross. Now, this is called inoculation, and it was so successful that the emperor ordered all of his children to be inoculated. But this concept didn't become widespread until over 600 years later, and over that time, smallpox continued to devastate populations around the world. In the 1700s in Europe, smallpox was killing 400,000 people per year. While the virus killed wealthy and poor, peasant and royal alike, a doctor in England named Edward Jenner noticed that randomly milkmaids never got smallpox. Now Jenner knew that milkmaids got small blisters on their hands when they milked cows that suffered from cowpox, and that was a mild disease that didn't really harm humans too much. But those blisters looked very similar to smallpox. So that made him think, Maybe cowpox and smallpox were related, and infection with the milder disease would be enough to protect people from the lethal one. Kind of like the inoculation idea from China way back in the day. So he decided to test his idea. He used cowpox from a milkmaid, fresh smallpox from a patient, and then a farmer that he knew let him use his son. Oh, yeah, that's kind of crazy. But anyway, he infected this guinea pig, you know, the farmer's child, with cowpox, and then a few months later, he injected him with smallpox, and the kid didn't get sick. Fun fact, this treatment was called a vaccine because it came from cows, which are called vaca in Latin, also in Spanish, and I'm sure lots of other languages. That's pretty cool, huh? Now, the idea of exposing an organism to a small dosage of the virus or a vaccination became widespread over the next few centuries, and it was used to prevent and end many other diseases. When a sufficiently large percentage of a population has been vaccinated, herd immunity results, and the population at large is protected from the virus. Now, this is why there's a standard set of vaccinations that most babies are given when they're born. In 1980, it was announced that smallpox, the most deadly disease in human history, had been completely eradicated. Polio and tetanus are other diseases that have also been eradicated through the use of vaccines. Now to today. So creating, testing, and producing a vaccine at mass scale is a very, very long process. The current COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in an unprecedented velocity to find a cure, but it is still gonna take some time. Now, no one knows for sure, but from most of the information I've read, the average guess is around 18 months. So until then, doctors and professionals advise that you just keep following the recommended safety guidelines, including most importantly, social distancing. And that's it for today's episode of Homeschool with Nat. <laughs>